Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. In today's video, we'll be covering the topic of how to grade your coins. One of the main questions asked by all collectors is how to determine the grade of a coin, as the grade of a coin directly impacts the value of a coin and is a key part of the hobby to know what grade or condition your coin is in. But how do you tell which category it is and what even are the categories to grade British coins? So we'll learn all about this now in today's video of how to grade and how to tell and how to tell the grade of your coins. Let's begin. So then we will begin by going through each one of the categories for the grade of British coin and comparing the description of that grade with a real coin that would be classified as that grade. For instance, we'll start with the lowest grade known as poor. And here I have an example of a poor condition coin. Now I'll read the description for you. A poor coin is a very worn coin with some or all of the lettering worn away and the design not visible, as we can see here. These coins are noted as being of no value to collectors unless they are extremely rare. So for instance, for this penny, if it was 1869, it would be worth some money as that's a very rare year. But 1860, a common year, this coin is worth almost nothing as it is very, very worn away. But the reverse here is very poor indeed. The absolute worst grade with only the date being visible there and everything else being smooth. Moving along the grading scale now, above poor, there is fair condition. So this coin here is in fair condition. As we can see straight away, you can see more of the detail for this penny. So fair is described as badly worn, significant wear on the features of the coin, usually with the, with the inscriptions and main features of the design still distinguishable. So we can see roughly, you know, Britannia there, and Victoria there. So the main features are still distinguishable. So there we go. I'll bring it back in this one so we can see. That is a poor coin. Bit of an upgrade there. Poor, fair. The next highest grade is a fine condition coin. As we can see here. Now I would personally, of course, grading is subjective. One of the main lessons to learn. Grading can vary slightly depending on who grades your coins. But I would say, and we'll see from the description, that this is a fine coin. So a fine coin shows more wear, with facial features becoming smudged rather than worn. And I think we can see quite a big smudge there, but we can still see details. So I would say that aligns with the fine condition uh, of grade for this coin. And we can still see detail in different parts of the coin. So like I say, you can see details in the face and the crown. And there is detail. You can see part of the Union flag there and different parts of detail on Britannia. So detail is still worn although it's hard to make out, and it can often have scratches and edge knocks. Now for this one, I don't think there's any, well, there you can see a few scratches actually, but nothing major in terms of scratches for this one, mainly just sort of smudging and smoothing of the design to be a fine condition coin. So there we go. Poor, fair, fine. The next grade up is a coin in, now just one quick note, there are coins that can be in almost fine, fine and good fine, just to sort of help it out a little bit more. So. For instance, this coin I might say would be in good fine, so it would be to the higher end of the fine grade. But another coin might be in, for instance, if we take this coin here, as we can see there are more areas of smudging, um, which makes it fine, but there are more areas of smudging for this coin rather than a bit less here. So this might be in the higher end of fine, and this could be in the lower end of fine, so good fine, maybe almost fine or about fine. But those small changes depend, as I say, they are the subjective points, but overall, that is a fine condition coin. Now then, on to the next one, which is very fine. So here we can see what I would class as a very fine condition coin. This is described as somewhere on the raised surfaces. And we can see, we can still see Britannia's face and her helmet and the shield and the flag and the detail in the clothing. We can still see all that, but we can also see there is definitely somewhere on these raised surfaces. But the key part here for the description, still retaining great or much detail. And this is where we enter the more collectible level. So for instance, people wouldn't really want to have coins this worn in their collection, though we can still see considerable wear. But here, we come to the coins that could be collectors as all details are visible. You know, all the details are visible, but it has just been sort of smoothed down and worn to a very fine grade. Now then, above very fine, and similarly we can always have, you know, good very fine, about very fine, or almost very fine. Again, the more subjective part. But above very fine, we have extremely fine. 
here I would say is an extremely fine coin. The description for this is, the coin shows a few signs of being in circulation. Definitely true, you know, all the de detail, definitely visible, but there are signs of circulation. And the presence of a couple of marks and dings and a bit of wear, even though it's a very close call to being in fantastic grade of a coin, this one is one that would be very collectible for a coin's condition, as all details are there, but it can still be, as you can see here, a few scratches, a bit of generic wear and circulation, but overall, really strong, high-grade coin, but just a bit circulated, usually, of course, as these old coins were. And then the highest grade for circulating coins, as you may expect, is uncirculated, so coins that have been struck for circulation, but have not been circulated. So, for instance, this coin here is uncirculated, it was a circulation strike, ready to go out in circulation, but some of these were held back by the Royal Mint to sell individually in little packets, which is where this one is from. So this coin is uncirculated. Now I don't have any uncirculated pennies, as they are much harder to find in the pennies as these are more widely circulated, as you can see from some of the lower grade examples. But this coin here is uncirculated, as it was struck normally, but never released into circulation, and so has no circulation marks. There still can be a few handling marks, one key thing is to note an uncirculated coin isn't perfect. It can have a few marks from handling, but it don't, can't have any marks or wear from circulation, therefore uncirculated. I will quickly mention the two higher grades, but these aren't for circulating coins. We have the striking quality of bunk, which is a little B in front of the uncirculated, the B standing for brilliant, which basically means the same thing as the uncirculated, but bunk has been struck with a higher pressure strike and has been struck three times rather than just once for the circulation strike. So you can see here, more detail is struck into the coin if it is bunk, as therefore it is higher grade or higher manufacturing costs and effort put into it, but those ones are not meant for circulation, as it's too expensive to mint on the millions coins in that scale, and so they are therefore collector's pieces. And the highest grade of coin possible is a proof coin. A coin struck, these are, this is a proof set here of all proof coins, and proof coins have polished dies, so all nicely hand polished dies, and they are struck multiple, multiple times with the, with the highest pressure possible for the um, press. So high pressure, polished dies, multiple strikes for the highest grade, which is proof. But the main thing with today's video is grading your circulation coins. So for instance, we can bring in a few more coins and uh, sort of look at our list. So this coin here, what would you say the grade is for this coin? Well. Let's zoom in, and do excuse the birds if you can hear them, it's quite a nice day today, so we're outside grading British coins. So we can see, although it is in lovely condition, you can see the waves behind, all their detail, the waves, the shield in full detail, everything has full detail, but we can notice there's a bit of green there, and there's a bit of generic, a few bits of scuffing on the arms perhaps, and a few bits of just generic use in circulation. So therefore, looking back to our list, and please do use this video in the future for reference, that would be an extremely fine coin, as it shows a few signs of having been in circulation, but there's not many, and it's still very high grade. So there we go, this coin is graded extremely fine under British grading terms. Now one thing to note and to look for is a few telltale signs. So if it's an uncirculated coin, it could have mint luster. This coin here, very shiny, with mint luster, as of course it hasn't dulled in circulation. Whereas this coin here, these ones, and you can see all these, they have dulled quite a bit as they have been circulated, and so therefore if they've been circulated, cannot be the higher grade coins. Now for instance, this coin here is a bullion strike. Bullion strikes are equivalent to an uncirculated strike, as they are struck quite, you know, just once quite quickly for the uh, manufacturing to be low, to sell as close to the silver price as possible. This coin here, would be graded, that's on the capture of that little mark there. But this coin would be graded as uncirculated, as it's not, not struck any higher quality, but it has not been circulated, and so therefore is an uncirculated coin. One thing to be wary of is coins like this. Now initially they look quite shiny, could these be high grade coins? Well these are in fact shined coins. You can see, especially this one, has been really really polished and shined up, and on the whole, we might do a video in the future on cleaning coins and polishing coins, but this coin here is absolutely worthless, only metal value, which is about four pence, as shining and cleaning coins removes all value, and just even not worth grading because it's so 
or value. We'll do a few more coins, we'll grade a few more, and we'll talk about a few more terms. So we have here this coin. This is interesting because it is very, very worn indeed. So worn, we cannot see a date. So this wouldn't be on the grading scale, as it's not identifiable. So to grade a coin, you will need to identify it. This coin here, our poor condition coin, we know from the size and weight, it is a penny, and the date is there, 1860. So it is an 1860 penny in poor condition. Now we do know this is of course a crown from George III, so it could be 1818, 1819 or 1820, but it cannot be determined what the coin is and so therefore will not be graded as it is below grading standards for this coin. So that's one thing to note for your coins if any of them are very bad indeed. Flying through a few more we can just use our scale and put it to the test. So we have here a 1911 half crown so let's have a think about this. Now we can see definitely this coin isn't uncirculated, as there is circulation, but we can see every single part of the design, so it can't be like poor or fair condition. Now similarly to that other one I just showed you, I would say there's wear on this that is a bit too severe to be extremely fine, so I would call this a good, very fine or a very fine condition coin, with some rare wear on raised surfaces, but still retaining much detail. So that's what I would grade this coin. We'll do two more. This one here, I would call it very fine again, just because you can see, you know, there's a bit of dirt, a bit of generic wear, but everything is still uh, visible, but not, you know, very nicely visible for extremely fine. So I would grade it as very fine. And of course, experience and practice does come in handy when grading coins. And the more you do it, and the more you familiarize yourself with the terms, we'll do a summary at the end of the video on the definitions for grading. And the more you memorize those and get them in your head, then you'll be able to tell that much quicker. So here I have a shilling. What grade is this in? I would call this, I think I would say this is a poor condition coin, just because it's a very worn coin with some lettering or most of the lettering worn away and parts of the design not visible, but we can still identify it as an 1853 shilling. So this is a poor grade 1853 shilling. And so there we go. That is how to grade British coins against the usual scale of poor, fair, fine, very fine, extremely fine, uncirculated, and then there's the bunk ones we've seen and the higher grade proof coins. But these ones, as they're bought sort of in the packaging, should usually say, for instance, here we can see brilliant uncirculated or bunk, it says that. And this coin, although I have taken out of the box, the box does say that it is a proof set. So usually these do not need grading as they already say the condition. And that is a final point to make quickly, as if you buy coins from reputable dealers, they will list the grade. So let's say I bought this coin from a reputable online dealer. They will say to me, here we have a 1911 half crown that they have graded in very fine condition. So I can then base my purchase if I want to do that, knowing the grade is already put there for me. So there we go. A quick recap of the grades now. A bit of a longer video, so I do apologize. But I think it's just good to get your head around the grading and sort of get it memorized by repetition. So a final recap. So poor condition coins. A very worn coin with some or all of the lettering worn away and parts of the design not visible. And we have to see, we have to still see the date though to identify it as that coin. A fair condition coin is, has a, is a coin that has significant wear. So there we go, significant wear on the design with some features still being visible and the inscriptions on the most part still being readable for a fair condition coin. Then we move on to a fine condition. So a fine condition coin is a coin that has considerable wear on the raised surfaces, but all the main features are still sharp. So you can still see quite sharply, Britannia is there, but there is considerable wear. We then move on to very fine. So very fine is some wear on the raised surfaces, but still retaining much detail. So you can still see most or if not all of the detail, but it does have some wear across the surfaces. We then have an extremely fine coin. An extremely fine coin is uh, listed or described as a coin that shows some signs of wear, but very few signs of wear from circulation, almost none. There will be slight marks, dings or dents, and faint wear, but not very much, as you can see here. For the most part, it is in very new looking condition. Then finally, we have uncirculated. So a coin that has been struck in a circulation grade, this one is here, but has not been put into circulation, and so therefore 
it's not necessarily perfect doesn't have to be brilliant you know it can be a bit you know, there can be fingerprints on it there can be be a few scratches from the hopper as it comes out of the machine but nothing at all major that would inhibit it and make it look like a circulated coin one that you can still tell has been uh, moved to the side from circulation and so therefore not circulated or uncirculated so there we go hopefully you have learned now more about the grading process behind coins and how things are done to determine what level of quality or condition British coins are in for the higher level people looking to get the uncirculated and the extremely fine coins, of course, paying more for those higher grades. And for this, even the beginners of you who have maybe fair or fine condition coins, I, I have many of those myself, just to know which ones are which and to sort of distinguish the, you know, the best from the worst in terms of grade and what categories all the coins we've seen are in. So there we go. Hopefully you can reference back to this video. If you've bought a coin wondering what grade it is, then look back, feel free to look back to the descriptions of each grade and see which one best fits your coin. But overall, a big thank you for everyone for watching to the end. I know it's quite a long video, so thank you for staying to the end. But that's all for now, so see you next time in the future for more coins on Bits and Bobs. Bye for now.